this story of mine, Pobby and Dingen? Well, it's a great big gem of a story, and I mean there's loads of stuff in it. Well, no one knows when they arrived or how, but it was some time after Dad moved us all the Lightning Ridge. See, he got the opal fever real bad. We are going to be so rich. You hear me? Ha! <laughs> so rich. Well, he moved us all here to mine for opal. Spent every minute he could underground looking for the stuff, along with everyone else in Lightning Ridge. And this is when we all noticed Kellyanne's imaginary friends. And I mean, this wasn't like your normal imaginary friends. No way. Sometimes they even fell out and Kellyanne ignored them. I mean, can you imagine that? Ignoring your imaginary friends. She was nuts. But that's Lightning Ridge for you. Full of crackpots. Like the sun's burned the brains out. You expecting someone? No. So, uh, who are these for? Poppy and Dingen. I see. Look, sweetheart, did you ever think about maybe getting some other friends? Friends you can invite back for real? That's what I said. Rex. What? Leave it. Well, as far as I can see, your opal's about as real as Poppy and Dingen. And if Kelly Ann's mad, then maybe we all are. Stuck out here waiting in the dust. For what? For a miracle? Well, that was a fight, I can tell you. And I mean, Mum and Dad liked to fight. But that was a real one. You could tell, by the way, there was tears in Mum's eyes. And Dad just stomped off. Well, I've been a bit unfair on Bobby and Dingen. I think... Maybe they do exist. I just haven't, like, recognised it until now. That's horse shit. Ash Mole. You said it yourself. She's never going to grow out of it if you keep on talking to her like that. Come on. Let's go run that bath, eh? Whoa, look, there's cabbages growing in there. You can do with a good scrub yourself, sweet pea. You coming, Ash Mole? Well, yeah, sure, Dad. I'm going to come and pretend to have a bath with two imaginary... Are you nuts? Do yourself. Where are you going? Oh, Poppy's headed us for the run on Saturday. We're in training. Uh, you said you'd take a Sorry, look at Sorry, love. What? Yeah, coming, Poppy. <laughs> He's a real taskmaster. You said you'd fix the washing machine. Oh, I would, love, but uh, I'm taking Poppy and Dingen down the claim. What? Kelly Ann's letting me take them on my own for the day. Poppy wanted to see the mine. Well, fine. I am telling you, Rex Williamson, this had better stop soon. <laughs> Kelly Ann, dead time. Dad! Sweetheart! Where's Poppy and Dingen? <laughs> They'll be at the claim all alone, Dad. Well, we have to go there. You have to take me there to look. We can't. Yes, we can. You lost them, you can help find them. But, sweetheart. Fine, get your coat on. You too, Ashmole. <laughs> no way. There is no bloody way Ashmole Williamson's going. <laughs> 50 metres by 50 metres. <laughs> well, you wouldn't think that'd be too much to search, but we looked everywhere. And that's when Dad did it. He broke the rule. The rule no one breaks. He stepped over onto another man's claim. We all know your dad's a ratter. He is not a ratter. Now look here, Sid. Don't you go calling me a ratter, you hear? I ain't been ratting nothing. So what were you doing, huh? I was... I was looking for my daughter's imaginary friends, all right? I know it sounds strange, but it's the truth, and that is the end of the matter. Ah, you think so, do you? Well, we'll see what the police have to say about that. Uh, Dad! Red up! Oh. Oh. The next day, I picked Dad up from the police station.
And then they said, basically, they didn't think I was no ratter. But they had to keep me in a cell for the night, you know, to get shit off their back. And what was it like? Yeah, not too bad. Sort of like a motel, but the bars weren't the kind that sell beer. <laughs> Whoa. Rex, they've set the fence on fire. Water, get water. What's wrong with her? Sweetheart? Sweetheart, what's wrong? She's burning up. I can't find them, Eshmal. Where have they gone? I don't know. I need to find them. Yeah, but how, Kellyanne? Kellyanne, how? Larden and Ridge, the craziest bunch of people you ever met. All you, stuck in the dark looking for what? Nothing. Yeah, exactly. Mrs. Gristle. Gristle. Ah, Ashmole, we get? Yeah, we get good, Mrs. Gristle. Gristle. You. Well, listen, Mrs. Grizzle. Uh, can you put one of these up in your shop here? Well, what is it? Lost? Help? Kellyanne Williamson's imaginary friends. Hobby on Dangon. Who say I'm missing? Up Opal and down my. I spread the word again and again. Can you help? My sister's sick. Till my throat was parched and I had to stick a can of mellow yellow permanently on the handlebars. And through the bowls club and the borehole baths, I even told some people at the line dancing class. Ladies and gents, sorry to interrupt your dancing, but my name's Eshmore Williamson and my sister's sick. So I need your help tomorrow to find her imaginary friends. I know that some of you might think I'm a bit of a fruit loop and some of you won't. But please, if you've got any time tomorrow, please look for them. Pa -pow. Pa -pow. Yes! Ashmo? <laughs> My plan, it's worked. And it had. Everyone was out. The whole town. I couldn't believe it. And we managed to persuade Kellyanne to get in the ute and come see. Hey, look! It's Mrs. Gristle. Grizzle. Well, she's got balls of water for everyone. Hey, Mrs. G, thanks. I made notices too, look. Only I didn't know how to describe them proper. Mainly because I can't see them. Uh, Kellyanne, Fat Waltz here. Says he's found Pobby and Dingen. Anyway, I've got your little pals. Here they are, fast asleep. Where were they? They was out at Cooker and shooting ruse. Must have dozed off under a tree. No. What? Well, he's pretending. You haven't got Pobby and Ding and anyone can see that. Pobby and Ding and don't sleep and they don't shoot ruse. They're pacifists. You've got nothing in your arms but thin air. Look. Fine. Have it your way, you little brat. You Williamsons are too stuck up for your own good. Pobby's just getting a perm. No. Bobby! Dinger! Come on, mates! It's Eshmole, Kellyanne's brother! God, you must be nuts! Mom! Bloody way! 
Ada. Opal. Dingen's opal. We're rich. We're rich. Dingen. Well, that's the one, Ashmore. That's the one Dingen wore in her belly button. You found them. So that's it. We're done. Oh, you're gonna get better, and we're gonna be rich. We're gonna be so rich! Well, now all you gotta do is arrange the funeral. <laughs> what? Well, I can't do it, can I? I'll be in the hospital. You can pay for it with the belly button. That's what Dean would have wanted. That's what she always said. I found them. Both of them. Down the mine. Right. They were dead. Right. See, that's why I came. Well, uh, where are the parents? Well, see, they don't actually have any parents. See, they're sort of invisible. They're like my sister's imaginary friends. Get out! Well, no. I came because I want to arrange a funeral. Are you joking with me, kid? Because it's not very funny. No, I've got better things to do with I'm my not time. I'm joking. I need everything. Flowers, headstones, the works. <laughs> have you got any idea how much that costs? About this much? Jesus. That's a biggie. You reckon it should just about cover it? Could, yeah, 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 could do. So you'll take it? You want the whole lot? Classy coffins, the lot? Everything. Tell you what. We keep this between ourselves and I'll see if I can come up with something. Deal? Deal? That next week was the busiest of my whole life. I went round everywhere, delivering invitations to the funeral. One for every person in Lightning Ridge, which is about 8,032 to be exact, which is quite a lot. Some people said to be there, and some people just looked at me funny. But I wanted to invite everyone, and that meant everyone. You want me to come to the funeral of someone's imaginary friends? Well, you must be mad, oh, you Williamsons. Well, maybe we are. What? Well, maybe we are. See you at the funeral. You could tell everyone was shocked. Pardon to let her pass till she was just sitting there, you know, looking at where Poppy and Dingen were. And then it was over. Well, nearly. Because Kelly Ann, well, well, she broke a promise. I suppose I can forgive her for that. She was always rubbish with promises. Promised not to nick my sweets, always did. Promised not to eat my chips, always did. 
I didn't mind those. But I wish she hadn't died. I wish she'd kept that promise. But when I close my eyes, I can see her in this giant place like the ballroom of an opal mine. And everyone's singing Elvis songs and just swinging away at the rockwood picks. And right beside her, chatting away a pobby and dinging. And I reckon they'd be glad that I was telling their story. Pretty damn good one all in all as well. I mean that bit down the mine, that was pretty good. And riding my bike, I like that. But mainly I'd like it if Kellyanne could see it. Or just know that I'm thinking about her or whatever. My sister, Kellyanne. Idiot. That more? Smelly Ann. Bogan. Am not. R2. Well, <laughs>